Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So is the market bullish or bearish at this point in time? I know we've seen Bitcoin move down quite a bit over the last several days. It's looking like we're coming to a point where we are rebounding. Santiment is giving us some insight here after Bitcoin's retrace to as low as $55,400, a very bullish signal is within reach. So these guys do pay attention to, uh, well, the indicators and the metrics on chain. Average returns of traders active in the past year are only 1.8%, the lowest level since Bitcoin bounced above $20,000 for good back on March the 11th, 2023. One of the top signals for all of crypto that sentiment values is when Bitcoin's 30-day and 365-day MVRV are both in negative territory. So this has only happened uh, apparently once before. This is when there is a mathematical validation that you are buying relative to the other trader's pain. If you had bought the last time both of these lines were in the negative territory, your return on Bitcoin would have been at 132%, guys. And as you can see over here, traders active in the past 365 days are up 1.8% on average. And uh, traders active in the past 30 days are down 7.9% on average. These two numbers, at least according to sentiment, are a great indicator as to a very bullish buying opportunity for Bitcoin. And uh, as you guys can see on the chart, I've got Bitcoin on the four hour today. Uh, you guys can see here Bitcoin is rebounding back out of this level in here. Now we were seeing a little bit of this yesterday, but it is continuing today. And that is a very, very good sign. Remember, Bitcoin did not even go as low as this next support level down in around here in around $51,000 per coin. Uh, and we got to remember, even if Bitcoin did come back in this level in and around here, I'm going to uh, demonstrate here with uh, with a yellow box. You guys can see here missing this level entirely, even coming down to this level from the all time high would bring us in the 30% retracement zone. So we did not even get that far. We are seeing a bit of a retracement here. That's not to say that Bitcoin won't come back down into this level. I mean, that is still, uh, well, a possibility. Uh, we still have much of the summer to get through. And, uh, you know, as I've been saying on this channel, I could see Bitcoin trading sideways, just chopping sideways before we see that next big move up. Sentiment is saying, though, that, uh, you know, it is the most bullish point in time for Bitcoin, just based on these two metrics here, the 30 day and 365 day MVRV. So maybe this is the turning point, guys, for Bitcoin. And maybe we're going to see the same thing for altcoins. As you guys can see, fear is at 37. So fear and greed index, we are seeing traders still scared to jump into the market. The market cap is at $2.12 trillion. That's up by a little bit. 24 hour volume, that is up uh, not by much, just shy of 2%. Bitcoin dominance sitting at 53.5, so not moving too much. Uh, there is a mix of green and red on the chart today. So, uh, you know, as reflected in the uh, in the 24 hour volume, we're not seeing a lot of trading activity, at least uh, not yet. XRP has not really moved in the last 24 hours, sitting at 43 and a half cents. Let's bring up the XRP chart here. Uh, bringing up XRP yesterday when I was recording the uh, the afternoon video, we were seeing Bitcoin or sorry, XRP trading in and around 43.9. So just shy of 44 cents. Uh, and today we're back down uh, a little bit, not by much to uh, 43 and a half cents. So XRP slowly moving out of this funk too, forming that double bottom pattern. Overall though, guys, on the XRP chart, still maintaining within this level here, just waiting for that catalyst to move to the upside, you know, with the rest of cryptocurrencies, most cryptocurrencies right now in the altcoin space, seeing a bit of a standstill here. Let's bring up the total three market uh, real quickly here. Total three, you guys can see altcoins, whoops, altcoins, have not really moved over the last several days. We did see a huge decline from the top. So altcoins have shed more than Bitcoin overall since that all time high, 35.4%. And, uh, you know, just going back to Bitcoin, we did not even see 30%. So altcoins have taken the brunt of it. Uh, they are up a little bit. So now uh, since that most recent high, Altcoins are only down about 28.25%. But here's the big thing now. Rob Art is now the second person who uh, who has mentioned this. It was the blockchain backer. And now Rob Art here, the real XRP triangle that needs to break to the upside. And uh, what he's referring to here in a bit of a tongue-in-cheek fashion is the IWM, the Russell 2000 index. This is the true indication. I mean, he's talking about the XRP triangle breaking out, uh, making a joke here. But this is the true indication of when we're going to see the rest of the crypto market move. So let's bring up the Russell real quickly here. Russell 2000, we still need to see this breakout. Here, let me throw this on the weekly to show you guys. We still need to see this thing break out to the upside, make new highs up here. 
So bust out past this level here in order to uh, in order to really see the crypto market moving. Now, luckily for us, this has been uh, consolidating over 2023. We are starting to see new highs here, higher lows as well, higher highs. And so now it's just a matter of when, <laughs> when are we going to see this thing break out to the upside? The S&P 500 is making new highs, which is positive. Uh, and even if I bring up, let's bring up the NASDAQ. How are they doing? NASDAQ still needs to break out too. So luckily for us, uh, you know, the charts are looking fairly bullish. Uh, well, the S&P looking more bullish than the NASDAQ. Tech stocks have been taking a bit of a hit, but uh, really this is what's going to get the crypto market up. Just another indication there that we should be paying attention to. So I wanted to thank Rob for posting that. And then there's the narrative, guys. The German government isn't just selling their seized Bitcoin to get a few extra billion dollars in the bank. That's pocket change for them. This is a test. They want to evaluate the financial stability and security of Bitcoin by testing how much real demand there is. And so Jacob King here saying, hint, there is not much considering Bitcoin plunged nearly 25% already uh, when we've barely begun and nearly 48% orders are getting rejected because not enough buyers. It's safe to say Bitcoin is failing the test but we already knew it would. It's not news that this entire market is being propped up by fraudulent Chinese exchanges and stable coins. And uh, apparently this has been the case for a while here. Vandell pointing this out. It's actually true. You are correct. Bitcoin is artificially inflated by stable coin liquidity, which pumps it higher every four years. This is what we've been seeing time and time again, guys, over this uh, you know four year cycle pattern. We've done a very deep analysis by simply layering charts and primarily following the money anyone who looks will be able to see this as clear as day this is not negative talk this is a fact based on data and numbers enjoy the show enjoy the ride and make sure you have an exit strategy and a plan to cash out as bitcoin rises to new all-time highs because it will crash again as insiders and whales use retail peasant investors as liquidity so again guys a great opportunity for me to say make sure you have a plan and if you want to follow what i'm doing this time around you can follow me at patreon.com slash working money channel i only mention it because i know if this is your first bull run i've been through two of these already two and a half really if this is your first bull run or maybe you got caught in the uh the downtrend in the last bull run and you really have no idea where the highs are going to be where you should sell out your xrp well i can give you the blueprint of what i'm going to be doing i'm going to be talking about my exit strategy again this is not financial advice but what it is what it's going to be what i'm trying to create here is uh just kind of a community where people can ask me questions, you know, they can see what I'm trading, they can see where I'm trading, they can see why I'm trading. I've already given my Patreon subscribers some resources, uh, you know, a cash out strategies, workflows, all that fine stuff. And uh, I'm going to keep updating that as the time gets closer, as we reach the top of the market. So $5 a month, I think that's pretty good value for what you guys are getting. And even if you don't join the Patreon, make sure you guys do have an exit plan because, you know, you don't want to make the same mistake twice. It's always good to be prepared and, uh, you know, make sure you guys pay yourself because this is a lot of stress, a lot of work, a lot on the table for, uh, you know, messing this up, not receiving the kind of rewards that you should be getting. Uh, so I wanted to thank Jacob King and Vandell just for posting that. Uh, another factor here with regard to the Bitcoin narrative, guys, Mt. Gox moved 47,000 Bitcoin, but it will not affect the price. It's coming from Ki Jung Ju here. Three possible scenarios for the transaction. So he gives us some possibilities here. Internal transfers, changing wallets for security, OTC deal, so an over-the-counter deal designed not to affect the market price. Or, or number three, it could be using a brokerage service, likely settling after uh, selling since it did not flow through brokers, wallets, or exchanges. Additionally, 1.5 thousand Bitcoin went to BitBank, but there has not been a significant surge in trading volume that has occurred. He says 1.5 thousand Bitcoin is a relatively small amount. Monitoring exchange flows though, it's necessary to determine if BitBank is being used as a broker. If we are seeing scenario three, okay, 94,000 Bitcoin is available for the sell side liquidity, but selling this much Bitcoin without on-chain movement is unlikely. If it's over the counter selling, we're in the clear. So of course, over the counter will not affect the price. Uh, if we do see this on chain, well, there has to be the liquidity there, you know, as uh, who was it here? Jacob King was mentioning, right? There needs to be the demand. There needs to be exit liquidity in order for these trades to be successful. So uh, Bitcoin uh, exchange reserve Mt. Gox, this is the chart here. We're not seeing the demand quite yet. And so maybe this is part of the reason why we're seeing Bitcoin price stalling. 
So uh, I'm going to keep an eye on this and I'm going to keep reporting back as new information comes out. Check this out, guys. HSBC is partnering with Visa to develop Zing International Money App. So, you know, as we're seeing, uh, you know, the market stall a little bit, at least projects are developing to leverage cryptocurrencies with real world utility. And here we're seeing Ripple partner Visa and Ripple partner HSBC announcing a new technological collaboration in support with HSBC's groups. Uh, HSBC Group's new international payment app called Zing. The duo said in a statement that Zing enables users to hold funds in 10 different currencies and send 30 currencies transacting in 200 countries and territories worldwide, all managed through one single app and smart multi-currency card. But guys, check this out. There's a third Ripple partner involved in this. Thanks to the cooperation with Visa, Zing was able to have a single point of contact for the entire project that delivered a multi-currency wallet courtesy of currency cloud technology and multiple methods to top up an account, including quick bank transfer, thanks to open banking technology delivered by Tink, both Visa solutions. So they're using Tink, another Visa solution there. So who do we have here, guys? We've got Visa 1, we've got HSBC 2, and we've got Currency Cloud 3 Ripple partners. In one collaboration, it is noted that Currency Cloud and Tink enabled speed to market for the Zing team by providing ready-made solutions to be added to Zing's core infrastructure, saving on development time and the cost associated with building and maintaining their own solutions. Zing shows how outdated the legacy financial systems are versus fintechs, the narrative says. The reality is that you don't have to choose. Zing is as intuitive, quick, and transparent as anything uh, to come out of the fintech boom, but with the benefits of 150 years of international financial experience as part of the HSBC group, said uh, the CEO and founder of Zing. We shared a clear vision with our partners at Visa that people all across the globe want easy to use, secure, trustworthy financial products that enable them to live their best international lives. And, uh, you know, if the pain points come out of payments, obviously, this just makes it better for everybody who wants to uh, conduct these international payments. And uh, so, you know, what better companies to be doing this than uh, Ripple partnered companies? And we're seeing, you know, more and more of these uh, types of companies collaborate on uh, more and more endeavors to solve these types of problems around the world. So this is beneficial for the XRP ledger for Ripple, the company, and also guys, most importantly for XRP, because the demand for XRP will go up as these partnerships continue to grow. So uh, great news here coming from three Ripple partners, namely HSBC, uh, Currency Cloud, and Visa. A recent OECD report noting Ripple's work with Montenegro, guys, in the regulatory environment there. This one courtesy of the Wrath of Kahneman. I've got the report up here. If you guys are interested, I will uh, link it in the description of the video for you. Uh, quite a lengthy report, 238 pages. What Wrath of Kahneman, though, wants to point out is this. Okay, Montenegro currently lacks a legal framework for crowdfunding, leaving it without active operators. However, crowdfunding regulation is under preparation as the CMA completed the drafting of the law on alternative investment funds and implementation is expected by the end of 2024. So they have a lack of laws regarding crowdfunding, but guys, that is going to change because of DLT technology. Moreover, there is no uh, legal structure for distributed ledger technology for financing, indicating that small businesses cannot yet circumvent traditional banking requirements and regulatory requirements associated with capital markets using digital assets. However, in April of 2023, the CBGC signed an agreement with Ripple Guys, a cryptocurrency and blockchain solutions provider to enhance capacity through the acquisition of essential knowledge and understanding of digital currency functions, encompassing the provider's potential requirements and implications. Moreover, Montenegro already addressed the DLT security requirements aligned with the fifth EU anti-money laundering directive by adopting the law on digital assets in December of 2023 and its subsequent implementation in January of this year, 2024. So they are looking to push forward leveraging uh, RippleNet technology, specifically DLT solutions, uh, for crowdfunding purposes specifically, but I'm sure that will, uh, you know, extend if, if it's not already uh, regulated for, uh, you know, more uh, types of payment solutions for different types of applications. Uh, at least here we're seeing for crowdfunding. Now people in Montenegro can leverage DLT platforms and uh, are leveraging RippleNet. Ripple is advising them on their solutions from the ground up here. So, you know, for these small countries with e-liquid uh, fiat currencies, it is very beneficial to leverage, uh, you know, something like the RippleNet platform, leveraging XRP, being able to really use that liquidity in order to conduct these types of payments that we all take for granted in the United States and, uh, well, pretty much the rest of the Western world. So great news here from the Wrath of Khan. I wanted to thank him for posting that. And I don't know about you, but this was kind of a surprise to see from a cryptocurrency exchange bitstamp, guys. One of the big cryptocurrency exchanges, too. I took a picture of the moon last night. What are they suggesting here? Is XRP 
going to go to the moon. I mean, Bitstamp, obviously no stranger to Ripple. You guys remember that Robinhood was uh, looking to acquire Bitstamp and uh, looks as though they have succeeded. So this was from back uh, last month. The acquisition of Bitstamp is a major step in growing our crypto business. Uh, that was uh, what Robinhood said back then. And, uh, you know, even back in 2023, Ripple and Bitstamp were in the news as uh, Ripple president explains why the company acquired a stake in the crypto exchange Bitstamp. So Ripple also has a stake in Bitstamp here. Ripple qu uh, recently acquired a stake in Bitstamp for an undisclosed sum. Ripple president Monica Long told the block back in 2023 that the stake acquisition in Bitstamp will help the company grow its global presence and go beyond payments. Now, Bitstamp is one of those uh, ODL providers, has been uh, a provider for ODL for a while. Uh, now we recently got the uh, the Robinhood announcement, and now, guys, we have Bitstamp posting this. I mean, quite a bold statement here. XRP going to the moon? If anybody would know the answer to this, uh, it would certainly be people at the exchanges. I mean, they can see the activity. They can see the demand behind the scenes. So maybe Bitstamp feeling confident that we are going to see XRP rally in this bull run. Hopefully uh, a little more than what we saw in the last bull run. It was uh, kind of disappointing to see XRP only reach $1.96 in the last bull run. But of course, uh, you know, the circumstances involved with this is very different than where we are today. The lawsuit is almost finished. We do have more on and off ramps available in the United States. The American market is the largest cryptocurrency trading market. So, you know, if we have all these things now coinciding, hopefully we do see uh, an XRP rally more similar to what we saw in 2017 and 2018. And even with all these barriers, guys, we still did see XRP go up 1600 plus percent in the last bull run. So if we see a 1600% increase, and again, I do believe that is uh, a conservative amount from the bottom there all the way up here, that would be uh, an XRP very, very close to uh, $5 per coin, actually $5 per coin exactly. So are we going to see XRP get up above $5? And that is from the bottom. We got to remember that is from the bottom here. Uh, you know, even just taking a look at some of these other aspects, a $5 XRP would get us to the 2.618. Uh, on the Fibonacci, if I remove that and uh, we just kind of throw a fib on here, we barely even hit the 0.618 in the last run. So the 2.618, I think, uh, you know, all things considered is very doable, but I do think we will go beyond this, guys. And, uh, you know, the reason I think that is for many reasons. $5 per XRP, I think would be a good start. I think, uh, you know, not too many people would be complaining if that were the case. You know, you got to think if you have $10,000 in XRP and you purchased at, uh, well, let's call it 50 cents, that means you would have 20,000 XRP. And if you were able to sell 20,000 XRP at a $5 price point, guys, that is a $100,000 reward there, less the $10,000. So $90,000 in profit, but I know many of us are expecting higher numbers. Again, even if I just throw a Fibonacci here uh, and we look at the top level here, the 4.236, uh, you know, we're hoping to see an XRP past $7.37. Of course, it will be up to many different factors involved, how Bitcoin is going to react and what we are going to see during this euphoria phase, guys. That is what I'm really paying attention to this bull run, the euphoria phase, and I'm going to make sure that I'm not going to be caught off guard. I think it was even Raul Pal who recently was saying that, uh, or was it Raul Pal? No, I think it was somebody else. Raul Pal was estimating that we could see a $10 trillion market cap by uh, by 2030. So that would be beyond this cycle. Somebody else was saying we could get up above $5 trillion uh, this particular cycle. I mean, we're already halfway there at about two uh, $2.5 trillion. But uh, if you guys check this out here, I'm going to try to extend this. This is the total market cap. You guys can see total market cap really does hit these Fibonacci's quite nicely. We can see a bounce back here at the 0 0.618. We're seeing the total market cap rebound. I don't know though, if we are going to see a full Fib this bull run, let me just put it to you this way. Even if we get uh, anywhere between the 1.618 and the uh, 2.618, that is uh, somewhere in the $5 trillion mark. So even in there, guys, that is a conservative estimate from this point in the rally. If we do see the crypto market go up another 150%, I think that would be a good start. Uh, and if I bring up the total three crypto market here, let's throw a quick fib on the total three. All right, so total three here, guys. If we can get up anywhere between the 1.618 and the 2.618, 
that would mean that all other altcoins, excluding Bitcoin and Ethereum, would be going up about 256%. So you guys can see Bitcoin and Ethereum take up a lot of that market. But if we couple this with the real world utility, the liquidity that uh, you know we're assuming is going to come into the market with regulatory clarity, I think an XRP at $5 is really just the beginning. And even at $7.36, I think is definitely achievable. I think the question really will be by mid to late 2025, okay, this is when we could be expecting real world liquidity to kick in. Uh, and by that, I mean adoption at scale. I'm not talking about millions or tens or hundreds of millions of dollars even. I'm talking about billions or even trillions of dollars. And so, you know, uh, there's the theory that it'll happen slowly. There's a theory that it'll happen, boom, in one fell swoop. I think if we do see it really take off, it will take off when liquidity kicks in. And then that $5 XRP should certainly be achievable. But that's just my opinion. I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.